the average developer could say, hey, satellite, go get me some images, you know, pretty high resolution images of that place over there. So that means there are people who are making um, lots of money, um, growing great economic success for themselves as individuals or their families, their households. And there's also people making great impactful decisions about climate and health and education and the economy and they don't look like us. One simple way of thinking about what we do is that we, we organize the only global interdisciplinary community of black geo students, educators, entrepreneurs, and professionals and our allies. And we, we are organized um, to ensure that black representation in all things geo is magnified, highlighted, and increased and to ensure that an equity lens that benefits black and brown communities is brought into to all of the work that you think of as, or that we think of as GEO. The people who made the maps to, to assess where, you know, which communities were gonna be impacted by every hurricane, um, you know, for the, probably for the past 50 years, uh, every kind of disaster, including COVID-19, um, most often, they didn't look like us, they didn't have our lived experiences, so their gut couldn't tell them, you know what, race and racism might matter. In fact, they, because they shared, some, in some cases, the opposite of our lived experience, their instincts were telling them, oh, let's not talk about race, that, probably, that won't matter, it's really about income and class. So when they made their maps, when they performed their analysis, either about anticipating the direct impact or how to respond, um, they were using lenses very different from ours and their lenses didn't include equity. We were being told at the beginning that, oh, COVID-19 is one of these great equalizers, race doesn't matter. But black and brown folks around the country said, I'm seeing something different. And going forward in COVID-19, even after you had folks saying, oh, race matters, let's make sure we're looking at race as we consider all the other factors, there would still be times when, say, a black or brown community may have been predominantly, let's say, black. There may have been um, white and Asian people coming from many miles away to get those available vaccines and, and not the black people who live in that community because they might have been at work during those essential services at the times of day that those vaccines were available. If we go back to colonization, it was people with power infusing maps with the power to carve up land for resources, to carve up land for um, people, to say th these communities know how to grow. These communities are craftsmen. These communities will be our, our other kind of labor force go over to those countries, kidnap those people, bring them into these spaces. These spaces in the Americas can be great places to grow cotton or sugar or what have you, and go and move those people into those spaces. Geography has always been this tool of power. During segregation, they said these towns, these spaces, these boundaries are off limits for these people and available to those people, always been. When, they, when, when people lose land, it's because someone says, oh, that, what was there before no longer exists. I know this because this is my current map. Post 9-11, unfortunately, um, you know, a lot of people lost their lives that day, and that triggered a, a, an investment in understanding the landscape geospatially because there was this realization that, what if something happened and one of these buildings disappeared because that happened? So now, um, in New York, if, heaven forbid, a building is lost and it wasn't planned for, we know what it looked like before. And um, as you go deeper, in some cases, we know what it looked like on the inside. We know what was on the walls. We know where every desk was, every chair was. And we can have that, we, that same power exists for us, for our communities, and, and we, don't, we no longer have to ask governments to collect it for us and other organizations. We are organized, and if we infuse our, our organizations, grassroots or otherwise, with this technology, then we have so much power over how we retain the, the information about the legacies that we're building today. My own neighborhood that I grew up in in the 80s no longer exists. 
the high school that I went to in the 90s no longer exists. Um, and, if, and if the folks in my neighborhood had the data about what that looked like, where it was, where the key artifacts were, um, we could, you know, for our future generations, rebuild that, those moments that we shared together. We could rebuild those moments using technology.